The Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 12, Spiritual Teaching 345, Love Each Other. 1. Welcome everyone to the Master. 2. A few dawns have passed since I presented myself among you as a judge, when I came to judge even the most intimate of my people of Israel. I found some watching and praying, others sleeping to the spiritual revelations and awake only for the temptations of the world. I found some of them with true spiritual preparation and advancement, others sunk in delay, a part of my children stuck in routine, and some more lacking in spiritual preparation. 3. I judged the love of my people and found that they still do not love each other from brother to brother, that still spiritual harmony is neither felt nor lived by him. 4. I heard the prayer of the congregation, and the repentance for the faults rose from some, from the others the weak request for universal peace and for the unification of the people of Israel. But how few indeed were those who were aware of their responsibility before God and before the world. Those who, with true spiritual vision, knew how to humbly rise before me in demand of a lesson. They knew how to present themselves before the judge, bowing their necks, surrendering themselves to my father's arms as children who know that I am above all love. And on that blessed occasion, in that instant of grace, I overflowed my spiritual pleasures. I poured out partly through the human channel and largely from spirit to spirit, my inspirations, my justice, and my orders, particularly on my people, but also on the earth and throughout the universe. Five. That was my lesson in which I came to you as judge, in which you had my ray communicated by human understanding, and surrounded by the workers of all the regions, by representatives of all the precincts, by the Trinitarian Marian spiritualist, by whose understanding I manifest my work and encourage the faith of the multitudes. 6. I will contemplate you again, thus gathered in times to come but no longer under this manifestation. This is how they sensed it in their spirit, and the people sobbed. The flesh was weak and rebelled before that next departure and end of these communications. 7. Elijah had prepared you. He had touched you with his spiritual index finger before that moment, so that all the people were awake, alert, and watching. So, at that moment of judgment and grace, he would not find him lethargic, because Elijah appears in the path of the spirits, always as a forerunner, and preparing the paths, separating the thorns and stones, so that my children's plant does not get hurt on the way, setting off the spiritual bell that speaks to you through consciousness, to the depths of the spirit, to leave you awake of light, and hear the voice of him who comes from the one who always tells you, Here I am, because the Father is at all times and in all places. 8. Thus I searched the hearts of men in that moment of judgment, and found it full of pain, uncertainty, gloomy forebodings. I approached to hear his heartbeat, to hear his prayer, which is less spiritual every day that is increasingly moving further and further from its principles, because it is in pursuit of materialism, in pursuit only of science and earthly trends. Thus I found humanity, man, concerned only with the goods of the world, but with his anguished spirit keeping only a ray, a spark of hope, and that spark I did not come to extinguish it with my justice, on the contrary, I came to enliven it with my truth, with my comfort, strength, and essence. This I poured out spiritually all over the orb in that moment of grace, so that my presence was felt and my essence was in everyone, without any distinction, because Elijah had also manifested himself before me. When I arrived, 
spirits and hearts had already been prepared by the forerunner of God in all times and in all ages. Elijah is the one who has always been with you and whom you have rarely felt. 9. Is he your father? No. Is it the Holy Spirit? Neither. Who was Elias then? Elijah is the great spirit that is at the right hand of God, who, in his humility, names himself the servant of the Father, and through him, as through other great spirits, I move the spiritual universe and carry out great and high designs. Yes, my disciples, at my service I have multitudes of great spirits who rule creation. 10. So you ask yourself, isn't the Father the one who does everything? And I answer, I am the one who does everything, because I am in all spirits, I am in all creatures, and without me, nothing would move. But just as I have given life to many spirits, I have given a part to all of them in my work, a place in my creation, a worthy place at my right hand. So from the first to the last, after preparing you all for that dawn of grace that passed, Elijah introduced me to the fertile fields of tares, and I said to him, Leave. Still the tares will multiply a little. Still the weeds will grow. It will deepen its roots and spread even further into the earth. But soon the harvest will come. Soon the sickle will come. And then, among the bad seed, will be the wheat. Scarce indeed, but it will be kept in my barns to be sown again when the hour is arrived and the earth is propitious and fertile, while the tares tied in sheaves will be thrown to the fire. 11. Evil has grown among men, my people. Goodness, virtue, love have been weak before the invasion of the evil, diseases, plagues, sickness, and calamities. All of that is the seed of the wicked. It has polluted the hearts of the good. It has made some weak. It has decimated the number of the faithful, because great force has brought evil upon mankind. 12. I have let this happen because of the free will that I have given you, because behind all the perversity, all the darkness, and the confusion of men, there is a divine light, consciousness, which is not lost and will not be lost ever. There is a principle that is the Spirit that keeps the kiss that the Father gave it immaculate. That is the divine seal. With that, I have sent all my children to the path of struggle, and because of that mark, none of those spirits will be lost. 13. Great is the number of the wayward, but they are not lacking on the globe within the different nations that form the earth, in the humble villages and in the valleys, some hearts that know how to rise to my spirit, that know how to preserve themselves in the pact made with their Lord, and they know how to be an example and spiritual support for the multitudes, and they, when they rise up, question me. Why so much evil? Why does repentance not spring up in the hearts of men? Why doesn't humanity seek good or peace? Why can't men understand each other in order to love each other, to recognize themselves as brothers in God? 14. And the Father gives tranquility and hope to those who thus find themselves watching and praying, saying, Wait! Those who have sinned the most, those who have caused the most pain to this humanity, will later be its greatest benefactors, because they will not die. Sin will die. Its materiality will disappear. The darkness will disappear, and the sin of men. But the spirit, guided by consciousness, will never disappear, even when it has to pass through great crucibles, for great restitution and spiritual purification, even when I have to go through corporal death. Even when he feels that the darkness that surrounds him in his restitution is eternal. Even when I feel that the fire of your repentance is hellfire. All this will pass. 
all this will come out ahead and clean, cleaner than gold when it goes through the crucible. 15. Life, since the appearance of man, can neither imagine nor calculate what before your existence has passed in other worlds, in the beyond. It is unfathomable for you. You do not know it. But remember my teachings. They are your way. 16. There are forces invisible to the human gaze and imperceptible to the science of man, which constantly influence your life. There are good and there are bad. There are light and also dark. 17. Where do these influences come from? From the spirit, from the mind, from the feelings. 18. Some and other vibrations invade space, fight each other, and influence your life. These influences, the same, springs from embodied spirits, as from beings without matter. Because the same on earth as in the hereafter, there are spirits of light as well as troubled ones. 19. If you ask me, what was the beginning, the origin of those forces? The Father answers you. 20. Before the worlds were, before every creature and that which is matter arose to life, there was already my divine spirit. But being the whole, I experienced an immense emptiness, because I was like a king without subjects, like a master without disciples. For that reason, I conceived the idea of creating beings similar to my spirit, to whom I would dedicate my whole life, to whom I would love so deeply and intensely that when the time comes, I would not hesitate to offer them my blood on the cross. And do not be confused if I tell you that before you existed, you already were loved. 21. Yes, very beloved children. 22. In order for God to be able to name himself Father, he made spirits flow out of his bosom, creatures similar to him in their divine attributes. This was your principle. Thus you arose to the spiritual life. 23. But the Father, being infinite and longing to be understood by his children, once your spirit was created, he formed material life and created one of your temporary abodes, the world. 24. With perfect, infinite patience, I was forging and preparing everything so that the sun would not find some imperfection, but at each step and in each work, he will find the trace of his creator, because everything was arranged from the beginning like a book, through whose pages and with the passage of time you will find the long-awaited answers to the questions you would ask me. Who am I? Where did I come from? And where am I going? 25. And when everything was ready, I endowed the spirit with the body that would serve as a staff, as a dress, to inhabit a wonderful world created with wisdom and perfection for him. A book that, with all its lessons and beauties, is offered to the Lord's children as a ladder that began in that world and was lost in the infinite. 26. And when everything was ready, I said to the incarnate spirit, to the man, Behold your temporary dwelling place. Cross the roads, drink from the springs, taste and savor the fruits. Know me through everything. 27. This was your beginning in material life, but what I tell you has been left far behind, has remained hidden with the passing of time. 28. Your numbers, your highest sciences to measure and calculate times, would not be enough to give you a beginning to a work that only God can carry out, being the only one who will always be beyond time. 29. If the scientist cannot determine the age of this world, how can he investigate the principle of universal life, if I don't reveal it to you? 
However, so that you do not break your understanding by wanting to know what is beyond your reach, it is enough for you to know that the Father, the All, in whom is present, what has been, what is, and what is to be, has told you on this day. The beginning of your life is far behind. It has remained hidden under the passage of time. 30. When man began to live in the world, he led a spiritual life full of purity and innocence. But I ask you, do you think that I was satisfied with the purity of those creatures? Purity that came from their ignorance? Of your lack of knowing? No, disciples. Through that ignorance, the Father could not be known, understood, or loved. Because of that lack of spiritual merits, none of the attributes could be valued as divine beings, and I did not want you to be lower creatures, subject to my higher will, or something like machines that you build, without will, without a life of its own. That is why I gave the Spirit the gift of free will, and I allowed matter to reveal the mysteries of human life to the Spirit. But to the Spirit I gave to know, through intuition, the existence of the Father Creator. And before the weakness of matter, there was the strength of the Spirit, guided by the light of consciousness, in which are my justice, my wisdom, and my voice. 31. The moment the Spirit awakened to human life before the voice of its material senses, it renounced his spiritual life and began the crucible the struggle, the needs, the pain, the consequences of all thoughts, words, and actions. The development of the human spirit and faculties began. 32. Yes, my children, the consequence of all the thoughts, words, and actions that the spirit had in its principle by reason of free will gave rise to invisible forces, these vibrations of good and evil. 33. Those who, in the use of free will, began to live in a healthy way, trying to achieve their well-being, and of the like, created healthy vibrations, beneficial. And those who, in the same use of free will, ignored the voice of consciousness, and were guided by the selfish inclinations, typical of their matter, created forces evil and deceptive. 34. Some and other vibrations remained in space, ready to increase or decrease their intensity according to the thoughts of men, according to his latter works. But those invisible forces were not to remain isolated from the evolutions of spirits. No disciples. Those vibrations would remain latent over all beings, and they would go to those according to their thoughts and deeds. 35. Those who were inspired by the light of the consciousness knew how to reject bad influences and sought the beneficial and healthy vibrations, and those who in the use of free will did works contrary to divine dictation, they attracted wicked, insane vibrations, increasing their confusions, and from that imbalance come the diseases and low passions that torment man until your days. 36. I, who know your beginning and your future in eternity, gave the first men weapons with which they will fight against the forces of evil, but they despised them. They preferred the fight of evil against evil, in which no one triumphs, because all will be defeated. 37. If you ask me, what were the weapons that I gave to humanity to fight against evil? I will tell you. They were prayer, perseverance in the law, and love for one another. 38. I have spoken to you about the origin of the forces of good and evil. Now I say to you, those vibrations should reach all the worlds that he would form, to test the Lord's children. But with it, I was not looking for your perdition, but your improvement. Proof of this is that I have always manifested myself to my children, speaking to you through consciousness, already teaching you through my envoys, or becoming a man among my children, 
as in that second era through the Messiah. 39. There is no race or tribe, no matter how uneducated it may seem, even those that you do not know because they live in jungles, impenetrable, that have not had manifestations of my love. They, in the moment of danger, have listened to heavenly voices that protect them and advise them. 40. You have never lived abandoned. From the moment you sprouted to life, you have been under the protection of my love. 41. You human parents, loving your children tenderly, would you be able to abandon them to their luck when they have barely sprouted into this life? When they most need your care, your sleeplessness, or your love? I have contemplated you watching over your children, even when they have reached their greatest age, even for those who commit crimes, who have offended you. For them, you watch with greater love, and if you, like this, respond to the needs of your children, how will the love of your Heavenly Father, who has loved you before you existed? 42. I have always come to your aid, and in this time when I find you with greater spiritual evolution, I have come to teach you how you must fight to annihilate the insane forces, and how to increase the vibrations of good, because the ancient beliefs, figures, forms, and symbolic names with which the men of times past represented evil, giving it human form, granting it spiritual existence, beliefs that have reached the present generations, must disappear, because without realizing it, you have created, with them, myths and superstitious cults, unworthy of the spiritual evolution that man has reached at this time. 43. You say to me, Father, if by misusing the gift of free will, by ignoring the voice of conscience, and by our weaknesses to your law, we have given greater strength to the vibrations of evil, to be spiritually free, to achieve the peace of the kingdom of heaven, what must we do? The Father answers, The freedom that your spirit longs for, you will achieve by virtue of the merits of your restitution. 44. When will you achieve your spiritual liberation? I do not reveal it to you at this moment. I only invite you to fight with the weapons that my love inspires you against the forces of evil. Persevere in my law. Be strong in the great trials, and you will see the establishment of my kingdom arrive in the heart of humanity, today divided into races, languages, and colors, distanced by different ideologies, doctrines, ambitions, and hatred. You will see it in spirit and truth. Abide in the virtues, persevere in my teachings, and pronounce my name with respect. But ah, how many roads and how many temptations it will have to go through. 45. Watch and pray. Win in my name, and then you will have reached your spiritual apotheosis. The glory will come to meet you, and there will be smiles of peace and true joy. The prodigal son of the parable will return to the parental home, and you will contemplate that humanity, after so many struggles and falls, will finally conquer the peace promised to men of good will. 46. Strengthen yourselves with my teachings, and share this light with humanity. Tell him what is the origin of evil, and how you can fight it by wielding the weapons of love and virtue. 47. Tell him that when man appeared on the face of this world, there were already vibrations of good and of evil, and that, from the beginning, my wise and loving justice has allowed so many faithful spirits, in the light of consciousness, as beings guided by the gift of free will, incarnate in this world some for the restitution of humanity, others for its own blessing. That is why you have contemplated in all ages of human life how great spirits have arisen, some for good and others for evil, spirits full of power, full of strength, and when you have seen the appearance of those spirits incarnated in men doing beneficial deeds, you have not conceived why not all men are like that. 
humanity has been confused, regarding them as extraordinary beings, who in the same time, when other beings evolve so little, they manage to manifest with so much power, with so much light, with so much love, wisdom, or virtue. And it is that these spirits have not come to be born or to begin their evolution on earth. It is that they are spirits that have been refined in other worlds, in other unknown places still for you. Those who have not come among you to hardly sow, but to bring the harvest, the cultivated fruit, seasoned by them in other times and in other places. They have come to bring your lips their flavor, their life, their essence, and with them they have flooded your existence with well-being. They have given your spirit an example and your human heart a fortress and staff. Of these have been some prophets, others patriarchs, others sages, others kings, some judges or teachers. Others have brought the beauty of nature, of the heart and of the spirit, to make you feel what is beautiful of creation to your heart. 48. You have also been amazed at the force that men and women have manifested in their wickedness through all the errors of your human life. The book of your history has collected their names in the album of your existence, in the book where God writes and records all the facts, all your works. There are his names also, and you have been amazed that a spirit, that a human heart, can house so much strength for evil. May he retain so much strength not to shudder at his own works, can silence the voice of his conscience, so as not to listen to the claim of God, who through it makes to all his children. And how sometimes the journey of these spirits on the planet has been long and lasting. To those beings, by virtue of free will, I have been revealed to my love and my justice. I have taken them, using their own disobedience, to make them my servants and believing to act freely, each one of their thoughts, their words and their acts, have been instruments of my justice, both for themselves and for others. 49. But when will that reign end? The Father tells you, the reign of evil has never reigned over humanity, because even in times of greatest wickedness, there have been beings faithful to me, obedient to my teaching, and apostles of my law. But the struggle has always existed from the beginning. Which of those two forces has so far been ahead in the contest? The one with evil. That is why I had to come to materialize among you, to help you, to enliven your hope and faith in the Father, to warm your heart and tell you, you are not alone on the path. I have never lied to you. The principles that I put in you, you should not twist them. This is the way of good and love. 50. For God there are no names of religions or organizations of religions. For the Father, only the practice that the spirits have made in his law of justice and love. I have always been among you indeed, and I am in all the beings of creation. But when it has been that I need to limit myself, approach and materialize for the sake of my love, I have always done it, already humanizing my voice, as in Sinai, already speaking through the mouth of the prophets, as well as becoming a man embodying my own word in that second era, to make me a word and a living miracle, to make me human in blood, to make myself visible and tangible to the material eye of each man, as now in this third era, choosing between you men and women of different ages, nationalities, and spheres, to give through one another, and of all, the same word, the same essence, the same revelation, and the same testimony. 51. But truly I tell you, Elijah has always been before. Before man came to inhabit the planet, Elijah, he came to give it a spiritual atmosphere, to flood all areas of your abode with spiritual essence, to leave this planet converted, not only into an earthly paradise, but into a sanctuary for the spirit, 
so that man will not only bow down to nature to adore her, but through nature discover the presence of his God. Even before you arrived, Elijah has been. Why? Because there the Father would make his voice recognized, from the first inhabitants to the last, and in truth the first listened to me. And if they did not see me in all my splendor, and did not contemplate my divine spirit in some symbolically, they did know that I was spirit, and they felt my presence. They knew that I was, that I spoke, that it was his Father, that I contemplated them and judged them, that I offered all good, and touched and rebuked them for all the bad. 52 but so that you could give testimony of the existence of Elijah, I sent him in the first era to become incarnate, so that he would bear witness to him and his father. And in truth, he was one of those spirits who with extraordinary events surprised humanity. He astonished men by his manifestations, works, and words. A man who, without being a man of science, had the elements in his hands, a being that, being human, he knew how to overcome death and pass over it. A man who, with his invocation, attracted the elements to surprise the disbelief and materialism of humanity. A man who, without being a sorcerer, really knew to have power over disembodied spirits, and of all this, he gave great samples to those around him. 53. Elijah rose up as a prophet, delivering prophecies about to be fulfilled, and those same witnesses heard them realized, and prophecies also given for long times, that the new generations, they testified. And the same was defending the servants of the Lord, that, touching with the hand of justice the pagans and Gentiles, the same stimulated the good faith of those who believed in and worshipped the invisible God, who rebuked the materialism, superstition, and paganism of the Gentiles. I manifest myself through him. I through his mouth, I spoke to men. I put my power in his right arm. And for you to be witnesses that Elijah was going through death itself, and he was in true life, I made him return. 54. He was to come before the Messiah to prepare the ways, to awaken men from their deep lethargy, to fan the hopes of those who, day after day, and generation after generation, from father to son, they came waiting with so much love for the arrival of the Master, of the Messiah. I made Elijah in truth and in spirit the Baptist, the forerunner, the one who came to tell you, prepare yourselves, enter into repentance and prayer, because the kingdom of heaven is near. And the people of Israel, the one who believed in the prophecies of the Baptist, the one who felt fear at his word, he gave himself up to vigil and prayer, cleared his spirit and heart, and he felt the proximity of the good news of the kingdom of heaven. 55. I made the life of the Baptist extraordinary from before he became a man, since before coming to the world in the womb of his mother, and then in his childhood, and in his youth, and until his last moment, so that his presence will awaken you as the bell awakens the sleeper, to gather you together as the shepherd gathers his flock, and lead you to the bank of the river to purify you, to wash your bodies, as a symbol of the purification of the spirit, that only thus can it receive communion with its Lord. 56. When Elijah has fulfilled his mission of preparing everything as a docile and humble servant, that he leaves the cause in the hands of the Lord and says, Father, here's the crowd, here's the spiritual multitude, which I leave in your hands, because it is safe there, because it is the safest fold in your own Father's heart. 57. I made Elijah return in the third era, and thus I had announced him as master in that second era, saying, Indeed Elijah has been among you, and you have not felt it. 
I will return to the world, but in truth I tell you, before me it will be Elijah. And as every word of the Master is fulfilled, in the third era Elijah has been before me, to come to awaken the spirits, to make them feel that the hour of the Holy Spirit opened their doors, to tell every spirit to open his eyes, to prepare its breaches, to cross the threshold of the second era towards the third. And so the, the manifestation of Elijah in this third era would be more palpable. I made him communicate through a fair man, Roki Rochas. 58. Elijah from the hereafter spiritually enlightened the man, inspired him, strengthened him, and guided him in all his steps from beginning to end. But truly I tell you, I did not come to choose Rohi Rojas from among men. I sent his spirit already prepared by my charity. I gave him material also prepared by me, and you know that it was humble that through his humility and virtue the Father manifested great works. He was a prophet, spokesman, seer, and guide. Of all this he left a clear example to the people. He was mocked and mocked by his own people, as was Moses in the desert. He was persecuted like Elijah the prophet, and had to seek the mountain tops from there to pray and watch over his people. He was mocked and judged by priests and scribes, like his master. He was believed and followed and surrounded by a few, also as their master. His hands spread balm. They did wonders that raised faith in some and confusion in others. His lips spoke of prophetic lessons for some that were carried out to the letter. His lips knew how to speak comforting advice to sick hearts. His mind knew how to conceive great inspirations, and knew how to rise with the ecstasy of the just, of the apostles, of the prophets. His spirit knew how to detach itself from this world and its flesh, to penetrate the valley spiritually and humbly reach the gates of the arcanum of the Lord. And through that elevation, Elijah's spirit manifested itself to the first witnesses before the Master's ray came. 59. It was the light of Elijah who prepared him, who illuminated him, and gave him certainty in front of those present, who gave testimony, saying, I am the prophet of Elijah, the one of the transfiguration on Mount Tabor. He spoke of justice, of charges and death, and those present in truth trembled, and that tremor was of faith, of trust and surrender to the Lord. But after Elijah had prepared that path of new communication, so that it would be the presence of the Father in the third era, once he had prepared that path for the Lord to come to this world through the human conduit, and prepared the ear, the heart, and the whole being of man to listen carefully to the word of the Holy Spirit, Elijah was spiritually present among humanity to waken all those asleep, to purify all the stained, to envelop all the cold in the fire of his spirit, to trace the way, the paths, and roads that will attract all spirits to the true path. Because Elijah not only works in this town, his spirit in his struggle encompasses all mankind, and when he had manifested himself through Rokhi Rochas, the doors of the third time were opened for the world because it is the time when the spirits of the 144,000 began to arrive, to reincarnate. 60. Roki Rojas was the first marked. From spirit to spirit I spoke to him, saying, In truth, around my word the great crowds will come to recreate themselves, but as they are still small, I will have to manifest my word and my works through the spokesman. I will have to mark on its material front a triangle to make them recognize that they are of the 144,000, that they are of those that I announced through another prophet from the second era, to come to fulfill in this time a delicate and great mission among humanity, a mission of redemption, spirituality, and elevation. 61. Through Roki Rojas, I made you understand that you were in the sixth seal, 
the book in its sixth chapter, in its sixth part. That book of seven seals is the anticipated history of the existence of humanity, because only God could write the history of men before they live, and being that book locked in mystery, for its contents to be revealed to humanity, only a hand could open it, a holy and pure hand, a perfect hand, and that was that of the Lamb, that of God himself, that you knew through his teaching and his sacrifice in the second era, a sublime sacrifice of love. He was the only one worthy of opening that book, because there was none on earth, or in heaven, or in space, or in any world, a spirit that was worthy to open and reveal the book and its contents to the spirits. 62. I have told you through this revelation that you belong to the sixth seal, but you have belonged to the five above, and you have to go through the seventh until you enter eternity. 63. The seven seals are your life. They are your history, your struggles, your triumphs and falls, your sufferings, battles, and at the end, your redemption, full of glory, full of hymns, full of spiritual feast, to the right hand of your Lord, in his own bosom. But there have been disturbances among my people, and after those confusions, I have not found the true preparation in my spokesman. So I, as a teacher, as Holy Spirit, came to get you out of them. 64. Elijah did not untie the seven seals, or come to implant them in your nation. Rohi Rokas did not unleash the seven seals. The book of seven seals was unleashed by myself. Only God could reveal to his children the intimacies, the arcana of himself. It is well that through my prophets and my apostles, the Holy Spirit revealed great lessons to you, but only your Lord is the one who can open his heart so that you can contemplate its interior. The prophets have spoken to you in a figurative sense, and the Father has brought for you the fulfillment of prophecies. 65. You see how in all times I have been with you, polishing your original weapons, so that you can defeat the evil that exists before you were, so that you always give access to good inspirations, so that you always attract with your prayer and virtue good emanations from the spiritual world of light, so that in your dream, in your work, in your difficult trials or instances, never fall into the web of temptation that has always haunted you. Temptation has always promised you the path of evil, full of fleeting pleasures and riches, false lights, wisdom and honors, which are today and which will not exist tomorrow, but which will leave great bitterness. 66. You see how you have always had a shepherd who has prepared the way for you and has always followed you, Elijah. And if you say to me, Master, in recent times, we have lacked great examples to follow your footprint. The master says, Take Roki Rokas as the good example. He is an image of Elijah. He watched over you as a pastor. He consecrated his life to my service, and in him there was clarity, elevation, and love, because he knew to remain faithful to the mission that I gave him from the hereafter as the good envoy. 67. Rohi Rokas did not dictate the law, nor did he deliver it to humanity. He was only my conduit, so that by his understanding and his lips will pass the law of the Father in words towards the heart of humanity. The spokesman knew how to surrender himself in my arms. He knew how to be inspired by me and be ecstatic. Elijah spoke through him to give the first loaves, the first drops of wine, the first delicacies to those who first sat at the table of the Lord in the third era. As a guide, he knew how to lead you on the path of truth, so not to twist your steps, taking care that you were not going to confuse spiritualism with materialized sciences, who speak of the spirit, but do not teach the practice of charity to all my children. 
As a seer, he knew to contemplate me and give faithful witness to those who heard him, so that they would affirm their faith, and his testimony was always true. 68. But after Rokhi Rojas, you have had other examples, if not perfect, yes, but of those that leave seed to your heart. Encourage your steps in the good example of your brothers who are walking ahead, but do not judge them with the severe judgment of a perfect judge, because then you could not find the perfection that you look for in them. But if you look for fidelity in one of your brothers, you will find it. Strength, you will find it. Love, too. Zeal, self-denial, and sacrifice. 69. Of all the virtues, you will find in your brothers an atom, a particle, but it is already something because it is the seed that I have been raising in the hearts of my disciples, since you all are. More, if you want to find perfection, look for it in my word, because in my word is the master of teachers, and he tells you this without boasting. He is perfect. 70. This manifestation that I have been giving you since 1866 is nearing completion. And when the Master ceases to speak through the understanding of man, when this manifestation has ceased for me and for you, what will Elijah do? 71. I have already told you that after having had me through man, you will have me from spirit to spirit. Perhaps the day after I leave, will your communication be perfect? Since the new day after my departure, will the people of Israel begin to have great inspirations and perfect communications with my Divine Spirit? From now on I tell you, no. I have already announced and ordered a time of meditation and preparation in these practices, because I warned that in that time of meditation and preparation, Elijah will be with you, but it will be spiritually. The spiritual gaze of the seers will bear witness to it, and your hearts will feel his presence, his warmth, his prophecy, and his encouragement. 72. When my people are ready, the Master will come on the cloud, on that spiritual and universal cloud, to communicate with everyone who is really ready, to help those who are not ready in their preparation, and awaken those who may be far from this teaching. And then, not only among this people will my doctrine find open doors for my spiritual communication. Certainly, all over the world, they are already waiting for me. They will not all be prepared, as I have told you, but there are the faithful, the persevering, those who have suffered a lot and have been converted, and those who have kept their preparation. There, they are waiting for me. I contemplate them and I will not disappoint. In them I will be in spirit and in truth. 73. The seers will emerge throughout the world. The prophets, those who communicate from spirit to spirit, the men and women of different ages and nationalities, speaking of great inspirations. That time is already near, O people. That is why I alert you. I prepare and teach you so that you will not fall into temptation or confusion, because great confusions are going to arise in times to come among this humanity. 74. Spirituality, which is my own kingdom, is approaching with great strides, like those winds that come from the north ravaging all, shaking all groves, shaking all forests and knocking on doors and lashing the faces of all beings. So also, spiritualism comes like a gale of light and love, a gale that drags and sweeps away everything, and it will establish itself in the heart of man, in the heart of all the institutions, within all nations and all races. It is my kingdom, the kingdom of the Holy Spirit, the reign of spiritual elevation, peace, and love. 75. In truth, you will then see how humanity, awakening from man to man, from heart to heart, will have to penetrate the temple, the sanctuary, 
the true church of the Holy Spirit, that is the universal work, which is the law of God, the law of justice and love. You will see men confused with spiritualism, still looking for it, still pursuing it, and then rejoicing having found it. You will see men fall into spiritual confusion, into great fanaticism, because for what a doctrine is truly established in the heart of man, first it will have to be like a pasture of fanaticism and the idolatry of humanity. The spiritual fanaticism of man in the third era will be very great. With such force, they will want to surrender. They will be unaware of material life itself. They will be unaware of its matter. They will be unaware of many material laws to surrender fully only to the spiritual. To think, to dream, to live only the existence of the spirit, forgetting the material. But then, the same material laws that have a principle of justice in the spiritual, they will be in charge of waking them up, touching them, reprimanding them, and correcting them. 76. You too, as disciples of this work, like the 144,000 marked, like spiritual Israel, doctrined by the Father in all times, you will have the great obligation to get up with your great book of spiritual wisdom, with your banner of peace, union, and goodwill, with your weapons of justice, with your gifts of revelation, of prophecy, of intuition, of analysis, of study in my word, to say to humanity, this is the work of the Father, this is the true spiritualism, and this is the way to deliver truth. It is the worship, the practice, that the Father has come to teach, as the Holy Spirit. 77. There will then be your endless lands, there will be your labor waiting for you, there will be the day without night, work without fatigue, and combat without death. There will be a feast for your spirit, a feast of love and redemption. The greater your work, the greater your joy, and you will pass from this life to another, bearing in your spirit the harvest of your fulfillment, as the best proof that you were one of the faithful of the Lord, of the spirits who came to this world only to sow peace and love, and from the hereafter you will contemplate the conflicts of this world. From there you will contemplate the seed of light and love penetrating everywhere, converting everything, shaking to its foundations all the principles of humanity. You will wait submissively and obediently for the Father's orders to come, to return to the world, to do my will. Those of you who have not finished your task, those of you who have not finished your work, will have to come, and others will have to go to other worlds, to the bosom of other congregations of spirits. But this is not sadness. Do not think about eternal rest in the bosom of God. 78. Your flesh thinks about rest because it is fragile, but for the spirit, rest would be its worst punishment, since the best reward for the spirit is activity, work, and struggle, because in this she glorifies her Father by imitating her God, who never rests. Fatigue does not exist in the spirit that is in full evolution, neither the night, the hunger, nor the thirst. 79. It will be enough for death to awaken your spirit in the hereafter, for it from that precise moment, to instead of being upset, understand everything, and say to yourself, My Father, today my wings open to conquer the infinite, and today I can love him and understand everything with the light that you gave me through the ages. Point out my task, my mission. Do you know if you, who today feel small, will go to other worlds to appear as great spirits, as prophets, as teachers inspired by the beautiful works of the universe? 80. You do not know, but I do tell you that your journey will not end with death, that your journey will not end the path in arriving spiritually to me, that you still have much to contemplate and experience ahead of you much to learn, 
and more to do, too. 81. This my word is heard by you on earth through human understanding, and on the scale higher than you, other spirits that inhabit it are listening to it as well, as well as in other higher scales the spirits that dwell there are listening to it, because this concert, which the Father in the Third Era establishes with spirits, it is universal. I have said, my ray is universal. My word and my universal essence are also from the highest scale that spirits have reached. There they hear me. You hear me now in this communication through the most imperfect form, which is through man. 82. That is why I am preparing you for higher communications, and so that when you penetrate into spirit, leaving this earth fully, you can then gather on a new scale to listen to the concert that the Father engages with your spirit. Today you are in matter, recreating your heart and spirit with this word, and those beings that belong to you on earth, whom you still call father, husband, wife, brother, son, relative or friend, are on other scales, listening to the same word, but for them it is another sustenance its essence, even when they experience the same joy, the same recreation, the same breath, the same bread. 83. Isn't it by chance, says the Master, this wonderful concert? Doesn't your spirit rejoice, thinking that what you are receiving here as spiritual sustenance is also a cause of joy and life, spiritual and other orbs? in other worlds where living beings are those that you love, beings that you knew, and that through spiritualism they are so close and distant at the same time from you. 84. Thus I prepare you, full of light, O my disciples. Thus I comfort you and make you contemplate the infinite horizons that shows you my work, so that you can take this message of hope and light to all humanity so that you look for the true meaning of human life and spiritual life, but not only take my teachings in word, but in work, because I want you to penetrate fully in the practice of my doctrine, and so be good spiritualists. Those who know how to give to the world what is of the world, and to God what is of God. What corresponds to your subject, give it with justice, with charity and love to her, and what corresponds to your spirit, be given with love and charity to him too. That you have a time for your earthly duties, and a time also for your spiritual exercises, for spiritual practices, and for the development of themselves. 85. In this way will fall from your spirit, and will be abolished from your heart, all evidence and trace of fanaticism and idolatry, materialism, and even superstition, and practicing spiritualism with clarity, with that purity, with that simplicity and elevation, you will give the true example to humanity of what worship should be that I expect of you in the third era. 86. You are strong, not only that you may be the disciples, but the masters of this work, full of balm, full of gifts. Know how to find all these virtues in your own bosom, in that invisible ark that I have placed in the heart of each one of you. 87. Go inside yourself, and you will find there the sanctuary, the ark. You will find a source, a spring of thanks and blessings. There is no naked spirit. There is none disinherited. Before my mercy divine, there is not a single one in the whole universe that can be called poor, unknown to his father, none that can be said an expatriate from the lands of the Lord. He who feels disinherited, it is because he has not found the gifts in himself, or because for the moment he is lost in sin, or he is confused, or because he feels unworthy. Always know how to find the gifts within yourselves, and you will see how you will never miss my presence. 
you will see how there will always be bread, balsam, weapons, keys, and all that you may need in your own bosom, because you are the heirs of my kingdom and my glory. 88. This is my word that I write in your consciousness on this day of grace. 89. Watch and pray, O people, for just as the seed of restoration, the seed of redemption, is among you and very close to humanity. The seed that spreads the tares is also germinating greatly in the heart of my beloved children. 90. Watch and pray for the sickle to come near. The sickle is not in the hand of man, it's in mine. 91. I will allow the hand of man to carry destruction, death, and war, but up to a limit only. Justice, perversity, confusion, and the ambition of men cannot pass beyond this limit. Then my sickle will come, and she will wisely reap whatever my will is, because my sickle is of life, it is of love, and it is of true justice. But you people watch and pray. 92. That is how I want to contemplate you, and in the strength of your prayers, I have also found a reason to forgive. By your intercession, I will also feel moved in my heart to stop my justice. In your requests, I will find balm to take to those who mourn. In your elevation of spirit, I will find also reason to stop the destruction that men do. 93. For this, I want you to watch. For this, I want you to pray. Forgive and love, O spiritual Israel. My peace be with you.